Hello, my name is Amit Paz. This is joint work with Pierre Fenio, Francois Lagarde, and Haomichi Michimura. And I will tell you today about distributed quantum proofs for replicated data. So in the replicated data problem, we have a system, a network, represented by its communication graph, as seen here. And there, is some, there are some pieces of data replicated among some of the terminals, more some of the units of the network. So we have a data center, we have data centers, uh, connected by network, and some of the data centers contain network that should be identical in all of them. And we want to verify that all these copies of that are indeed the same. Of course, a classical and very useful problem. And today we'll talk about one mechanism of how to verify this, how to verify that the replicas of that are indeed the same. So we want that if all the replicas are okay, as in the left, Everything is okay, we can continue computing as usual in the network. And if it's not okay, as in the right, one of the uh, replicas of data goes corrupted, then some unit raised alarm says something is wrong. And we have to recompute or re replicate the data. So this question is the type of question studied under the title of distributed certification or distributed verification and was studied a lot before under names like proof leveling schemes, locally checkable proofs, and recently uh, distributed interactive proofs. And this work will talk about how to extend these mechanisms to use quantum bits. So we think of a mechanism that have two uh, ingredients. One is the prover above that sees all the network and wants to help the units to verify its state. And the other is the units themselves the verifiers that have to verify the state of the system, in our case, that the replicate data is consistent. So, and we have also two phases. In the first phase, the prover on top assigns certificates to the units. These certificates will help them to verify. And in the second phase, the units exchange the certificates or send messages between them. Each unit will talk only to its immediate neighbors in the network. And then they have to decide if they think the state of the system is okay or not. So our goal is to assign certificates to the units or to have, uh, to allow the prover to assign certificates such that if all the replicas are identical, the state of the system is okay, then all nodes accept. We think of the nodes as just Turing machines or fine automata even, and they just have to accept uh, all of them. And later they may reuse these certificates to verify the state again and again. So we think of a long lived network that may be used a lot with, for a lot of things. And more other things the network does is to verify the state of the replicated data in the background and periodically and reuse these certificates to verify it again and again. If something goes wrong, say one of the uh, replicas of the data goes corrupted, then at least one of the units have to identify it. We say it rejected and it rejects the state of the system. And then the units will have to recompute, re-replicate the data and also get or compute new certificates. And maybe one of the questions that you may ask yourself now is how do you get these certificates? It's kind of a weird mechanism. And we actually have two answers for that. One is let's say you build a network so you have one time initialization of the network or you assign the data, replicate the data, then the units of network will also create certificates that will help them to check later that the data is still okay. So this is one time initialization. Another way is to just think of an external entity, say a cloud that sees all the network and all the replicated data and tries to help us to verify the state, help the units to verify the state of the system and the replicated data. And our goal in this mechanism is to have small certificates and also small messages because you keep the certificates in memory. Maybe you keep uh, replica, replicas of them in the local memory of each unit. And you also send them. So you would want to send small messages because these are sent in the background and you don't want it to interfere with the regular uh, work of the system. And this kind of mechanism we study a lot both in practice but they're useful for four turbulency network. This is a way to detect uh, failures or changes that are uh, the change the state of the system.
but also in theory, because actually another way to think of these uh, certificates is as witnesses in non-deterministic uh, computation, like in the NP class. So while most uh, research in distributed computing is more like P, is about computing or deciding state of the system without certificates, these mechanisms have to do with non-deterministic computation, where you think of the certificates as witnesses for non-deterministic computation. Okay, so now let's see a simple example, how you can use certificates to verify the state of the system or of the replicated data in this case. And this will be a trivial one where the certificate just contain all the data. So the prover will assign to each of the nodes, the full data, the full replicated data as a certificate. And now in the verification phase, the unit will check two things. If a unit has, it, has data, it will check that the certificate it got is the same as the data. And in addition, they all exchange certificates with the neighbors. And each unit will check that its certificate is the same as the certificate of its neighbors. We assume the network is connected. So if every two neighbors have the same certificates, then all the units has the same certificates. If everything is okay, as in this example, all the units will accept and say everything is okay. If something is wrong, say one of the replicas of the data is not as it should be, is not the same as the other replica, then one option is to get the same certificate as before. Most of units are still happy and think everything is okay, but the unit that has the wrong uh, data sees that there is a problem and raise alarm and then they can re-replicate. Another option is that the certificates also go wrong as in this example. Still many units would think everything is okay and specifically all the units with the replicated data in them would think as everything is okay. But other units, we'll see something is wrong because a unit and its neighbor don't have the same certificate. So among all the edges that separate the wrong certificates and the correct certificates, we will have units that train alarm and say, something is not okay, we have to re-replicate the data and create new certificates. So this is a very nice and simple example and for this mechanism, but the certificates are huge and they're as big as the replicated data, and we think of replicated data in this example, when this question has been very large, maybe much larger than the network itself. So this is the first parameter we care about, and the size of data. Know that here n is like in communication complexity in size of data, and not the size of the network, which is usually used in distributed computing. We also have t, the number of terminals storing data, and r, the radius of the terminals, that is the large distance between one of the terminals and all the others. And our goal, as I mentioned before, is to minimize both the certificate size and the message size. So using quantum bits or distributed quantum computation was studied a lot before, but not for verification. And the main idea of this work is to use quantum bits as certificates and as messages. And let's see how we do it. So the first thing we do in this work is to define this mechanism of distributed quantum Merlin Arthur proofs or general distributed quantum certification. The first result shows that there is a distributed quantum Merlin Arthur protocol for the replicated data problem uh, with some parameters. The most important one, uh, most interesting one for this talk at least, is the dependence on n, the size of the data, which is only logarithmic. So number of qubits in the certificates and in the messages is only logarithmic in the size of the data. And we also show that a classical protocol without using quantum bits requires linear size certificates or messages. You cannot get, get as low as log n certificates and messages if you don't use quantum bits. And this is true even if randomization is allowed. So this problem really have exp exponential separation between the certificate and message size within the quantum regime and the classical regime. And I so should say that all the uh, scale of these certificates is usually up to linear or quadratic. We don't think of exponential size certificates, we can settle with much less. And our goal is to get constant or logarithmic size. So linear size here is a very bad answer. And this is why we wanted to use quantum bits to get much better answers. 
So the main idea, the main result, as I mentioned, is to get a logarithmic size certificates, logarithmic in the size of the replicated data. And I will show you this today on a line where the graph is only a line and I will only, only has two terminals, A and B, that have the data on them. And so we start from asking what happened if A and B, Alice and Bob are neighbors. They are immediate neighbors. They can talk to one another directly, not with a line, not with a line graph between them, graph of a path, but they're immediate neighbors. And this question was actually studied and answered in the regime of communication complexity, where you don't have a whole network, but just two players, Alice and Bob, that want to check something in this in this case, they want to check equality of their inputs. Alice is input X, Bob is input Y. They want to check that X equals Y. And one way to do this using randomization is using a random hash function. So Alice will choose a random hash function H from a family of hash functions, send to Bob H, the function itself, and H of X, the hash of the input of Alice. And Bob can verify that the hash on its input y equals to the hash on else's input hx that he got as a message. And the probability that this happens if the inputs x and y are not the same can be made arbitrarily small by choosing large enough family of hash functions. So we can actually solve the problem very easily with small messages using randomization if Alice and Bob are neighbors. But in our case, we have a path that may, may be much longer than one H. So can we do the same? Uh, so the trivial thing will say, okay, let's have the prover give the hash of the input X to all the units in the network, to all the units on the path. But this can actually, this actually does not work because the hash functions function must be chosen at random. Otherwise the prover may try to fool us and give us hash function of uh, X, the input of Alice. And even if Bob has input Y that is different, choose the hash functions that it, such that H, X, and H, Y are equal. And of course, this hash function exists, just the probability to choose it at random is very, very small. So we cannot trust the prover to choose the function because he may fool us. Another thing we can do is to choose a random function. But then we have to interact with the prover to send the question to the prover, send the prover the hash function. Of course, that's, there are also mechanisms that allow this, but this is not what we discussed today. When you want to get one-time uh, hashes, one-time certificates, and use them again and again, and not interact with the prover or do some complicated things like that. So you cannot just have the hash function as the certificate in our setting. What can we do instead? Well, using quantum bits as expected maybe. The idea will be the following. The certificate will be a quantum fingerprint of X, the replicated data. So what is this quantum fingerprint? It's a superposition of quantum states representing the, all the different hash functions. And for each hash function, function also the hash of X, the input. Basically, we have these pairs H, H, X, as we had, had before in the communication complexity setting. And we, super, we have a superposition of all these for all the possible hash functions from our family of functions. And this takes log n quantum bits. And what is the verification procedure here? Well, the units will check that all the certificates are, are identical by just ch checking that the certificate of every two neighbor is the same. And each node that also has an input X will check that the quantum fingerprint of X equals to the certificate it got. Okay, so they all check equality and terminals nodes that have input also check that the input, the hash of the input is the same as the certificate. So this looks very simple, but actually there are many details to consider here. I'll mention, uh, the challenges we have to meet or the problems we had to face. The first is how do we even check equality of quantum states? There are answers for this, but we had to pick one that is good. And 
more interesting maybe uh, question is the no cloning property of quantum states. So actually what we think of is, look, uh, we have this node V in the network. V will send its certificate to B to the right and receive certificates from U on the left. And then it has to check the quality of its own certificate and the certificate it got from U. But V doesn't have a certificate, it sends it to B. In the classical setting, we don't care, just keep a copy and send the copy. But here, these are quantum bits, you can't replicate them. So you have to do something more clever. What we do is to choose a kernel if to send the certificate or keep it. And of course, you can repeat it and amplify the success probability and so on. So this is one interesting challenge, no clone property. And this also affects the next challenge that of reusing the states for re-verification. As I said, the motivation from this, uh, all this mechanism of quantum of distributed certification is to check the state of the system again and again, and do this as long as the state is okay in the background without recomputing certificates every time you want to certify to check the system is okay. We just do it periodically at the background and not get the certificates again and again. So we have to reuse the certificates, but then you have a problem because you sent them. That's one problem. Another problem, you check quality. So you have to make sure that checking equality doesn't ruin the quantum uh, state. And the last challenge I want to uh, mention is what happens if your states are not even product states. As I mentioned before, you have superposition of several hash functions and hashes of values. But what if your certificate is so corrupted that it's not even uh, in the form of this product state? And let's get a bit more into details. So the first detail is this quantum fingerprint. And I mentioned this is a superposition of hash functions. And with the right family of hash functions, we can get the following property. If X equals Y, then the fingers the inner product of the fingerprints of X and Y is one. If X is different from Y, then the inner product of their hashes of their fingerprints is more than a uh, value epsilon that we choose. Okay, so we have these fingerprints that have this property of very large distance between equality and inequality of the values you apply the fingerprint on. And using this, we can use the classical swap test. This is a test for equality between quantum states. And the test accepts with probability half plus the inner product squared over two. So if X and Y are equal, then the test will always accept. If X and Y are not equal, then the probability that they pass the test, that the fingerprints pass the test, is at most half plus epsilon. And what we show in analysis is that the quantum states do not collapse as long as X equals Y. So you can reuse the certificates again and again as long as the system is okay and the replicated data is okay. And the, the test actually can handle also non-product states. So if the certificate is really corrupted or the proof tries to fool you, the test will still catch it and uh, accept only with probability half plus X. Other challenges that I will not talk about today is what happened on general graphs, not a path as you see here, but a more general graph. And then you have to check equality on many, many different paths and have maybe more, more complicated certificates. And accordingly, what happens if you have more than two terminals? And another thing we did in this paper is to prove lower bound for the same problem in the non-quantum setting, even for the randomized case. The open questions and conclusions is first of all that quantum bits give exponential advantage, also for distributed certification. This was known before for other settings, centralized or distributed uh, computation, but not for certification. And the main open problem is to use this idea for uh, verifying other Boolean predicates of label graphs, graphs for non label like finding freeness or symmetry of the graph using quantum certificates. And the question is proving lower bounds. We have some directions for this, but it's still not entirely clear how to prove lower bounds for using quantum certificates. And I will stop here and thank you very much.